Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss IPv6 subnetting, that is Internet Protocol version 6. And for illustration, let us suppose that we are you are working in some organization and that organization needs some IPv6 addresses and you're working there. So what you do, you just contact with some local ISP and that ISP uh, assigns you, uh, that ISP gives you some IPv6 address that is actually known as global routing prefix so that ISP actually assigns you this global routing prefix and that is a block of IPv6 address. That's not a single IPv6, that is actually a block of IPv6 addresses. And uh, to elaborate more, so in this IPv6 address, as if you remember, we have eight quartets. So these are different blocks, these are different quartets. So this first, second, so we have eight quartets and and in each quartet, if you remember, we have these four hexadecimal digits. It means with this number, the ISP has given you the information about these three quartets, one, two, three. And this 48 is a bit, that is actually the prefix length. So it says that up to 48 bits have been assigned by ISP. And these are remaining quartets which you can assign by yourself as an organization. So these three bits, and now all the addresses is starting with the, these hexadecimal digits are actually property of your organization because this is what you have purchased from this ISP. So subnetting means subnet, subdivide network. So we are going to subdivide a, a network and if you remember in IPv4, the 32-bit IP address was divided between two parts. One was network and second was second one was host. And we, during subnetting, we actually borrowed some of the bits from host portion and we created these subnets within that network. So this was the strategy in IPv4. But in IPv6, we don't have these subnet masks. And, uh, we have only this 128 bits and those in that 128 bits, we get some information from uh, the ISP in the form of global routing prefix. And that is actually a registered IPv6 address block. So for example, this is the global routing prefix. And as an example, this is the global routing prefix assigned to us by the ISP. And now, on the basis of this information, we have to create subnets. So this 48 should be here. So we can write this like here, slash 48, that is the prefix length. Anyway, and then the common prefix length for global routing prefix are 32, 48, 56. So these are the common one. So it means out of 128 bits, the global routing prefix will have this, this are these many bits out of this 128 bits of IPv6 address. And then we have the interface ID as well. So this interface ID is the part which we assign to individual interface of the router, or we can assign to specific computer, laptop, a tablet. So this is the interface ID. And the a common interface ID length is 64 bits. It means in this part we use 64 bits. And now the important field which we are going to discuss that is about, so this is 64. Important field that is subnet. So this is the part which we are, which we are interested in today. So this is subnet part where we will create the subnetting. Exactly in like in, in IPv4, but instead of using some subnet mask, what we have done, we have just used global routing prefix, and uh, this is the common length of interface ID. So now we need to find out the length or the number of bits to be used in subnet field. So for example, this in our case, just uh, these are four. So in real sense, to find out the subnet, uh, the number of bits in the subnet field, what we do, we have a formula, and that formula is that 
common subnet length is 64 minus p and this p is actually the prefix length which is given by given to us when we got this ipv6 or when we got this global routing prefix from the isp so in the slash part we have this prefix length and if you want to find out the length of subnet then what we do we just 64 and minus p we can have the the subnet part and this is based on the condition that the interface id will be 64 bits long Otherwise, what is the formula? Otherwise, formula is P plus S plus I should be 128. Okay, otherwise this. And if you want to find out S, then what we do? We subtract I and P from this 128 and we will have the subnet part. But in this simple sense, just we get 64 minus P and then we will have the subnet. So in this case, 64 minus 48, we will have our subnet so that is 16 bits clear so now we got this the length of the subnet field in our ipv6 address and now this should be easy for us because different combinations of this will give us the subnet ids so this is exactly same like in ipv4 anyway what we do we have the length of i this subnet that is 16 bits and this this global routing prefix and the subnet part they collectively are known as subnet ids are the prefix id and today we are going to find out this subnet id so given global routing prefix how many subnet ids are possible and we have to find out those all subnet ids and in this case how many subnet ids are possible so there are 16 bits, it means 2 raised to power 16, that is 65,000 and something. So these, these are the possible number of subnets by using these 16 bits. And now how many host addresses are, how many interface IDs are possible using these 64 bits? So in principle, this should be 2 raised to power 64 bits, but because of some reserved addresses, the recommended is 2 raised to power 18 interface id per subnet so this should be interface id to be specific now with this information let us solve an example so for example consider the following ipv6 address to find out all the prefix ids or subnet ids what we do we have been given this global routing prefix and this global routing prefix has 40 8 in length and in interface id as we mentioned before that this is generally 64 bits long it means by using this 64 and 48 we can find out that how many bits are there in subnet id so that is 16 bits and you can see that if we add this 48 bits 16 bit and 64 bits they all should be 128 anyway so in our case, these are 16 bits which are being used in this subnet part. Now we have to find out the subnet IDs are the prefix IDs for this problem. So the bits in this subnet field will be used to find out all the valid subnet IDs. So these bits will be used different combinations in this field. So there are some rules. The rule is that the global routing prefix should remain same for all subnets. It means this part should remain same. Okay. And then second part is that the, the different subnets are represented by different subnet bit combination. So all combination starting from 000. So these are actually 16 bits, but in hexadecimal uh, notation, these are four digits. So we have to write the different combinations of that. And then in the interface ID field, the all bits will be zero, or all the digits will be zero. So following these rules, we are going to find out the subnet IDs. So the first one will be, because this part has to remain same, this is same. This has to be all zero, so this all zero. And in the subnet ID field, this sorry, in subnet field, so in this subnet field, we have to write all the combination of these these bits and remember 
these are actually binary bits. 16 bits so this zero says zero 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 and up to 16 so zero and then zero 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 and one and then zero 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 and one zero and then one one and then we have to convert them back into into hexadecimal so this is for example this is the first one 16 bits are in zero position and then when we convert them back into the hexadecimal, then they see the number. So this is the first combination of these 16 bits, and this is our first subnet ID or prefix ID. Now to find out the next subnet ID, what we do, we take these all zeros, 15 times zero, and then one. So then, and then we again convert them in, back into hexadecimal. So that will be one. Otherwise, just what is the num possible number of uh, submits? That is 65,500 something. So that number from zero to that number, you can directly write in hexadecimal digits as well. So this is basic, but you can do it directly as well. Zero, one, and then the third possible combination. In the same way, we have this fourth possible combinations. And in this way, we will have the possible combination up to 65,000. So this will be two raised to power 16 possible combination. So two raised to power 16 possible subnets are there within this global routing prefix. So it means ISP has given us global routing prefix and by using that, if you want to create more subnets within that network, then we can have two raised to power 16 more subnets in our uh, network. So we can still have another combination. So uh, all the all the possible subnet IDs are not possible to write here on the screen. So I hope you got the idea that this is how we can calculate or we can find out the subnet IDs or the prefix IDs in IPv6. So this is this is same for global uh, routing prefix and uh, you can practice it and uh, yes i hope this was a bit helpful for you and uh, thank you thank you very much for your time see you in in next ipv6 related video